if you're gay in Iran, they hang you from a crane no. until you die. Good morning and welcome to another episode of Better Business, Better Life. Today I am joined by another amazing Canadian man, Nikki Ballou, who is um, not only a best-selling author of eight books, he is also affectionately known as the millionaire maker, having um, transformed 11 people's lives into millionaires. And he's got the top one of the top 10 iTunes business podcasts as well. So can't wait to hear what Nikki has to share with us. Welcome, Nikki. Well, thanks so much for having me. It's an honor to be here. I'm excited to have this conversation with you. Oh, same here. I can't wait. We had a little bit of a chat before we came on the podcast, obviously, and I was just learning how you're actually um, a Christian from Iran who kind of escaped the tyranny that goes on in Iran and moved to Canada and the, the things you've been able to achieve since. So it's phenomenal. Tell me a little bit about your story, because I've just heard it, but our listeners would love to hear, you know, who is Nikki? Where does he come from? And what are the things that you've done that you're most proud of? Absolutely. So thanks for asking that question. So uh, as, as you said, I'm, um, I'm an immigrant from uh, the Middle East. I'm a Christian from Iran. And uh, when I was a boy in the late 70s, and I know I'm dating myself by saying that, my late father, um, you know, um, he, he was a very brilliant man. And the Iranian revolution happened. And it was an Islamic revolution. So it was really a theocratic-based uh, government that came into power. And my late father could see the writing on the wall. He said, this is not going to be a great place to raise my family. We need to hightail it out of here. And he was so far seeing. He got us out of Iran and eventually we moved to Canada. And I thank God every day that he did that because, you know, um, we get to live in freedom. We get to choose what kind of life we want to live. We get to disagree with the powers that be that are in charge. Although in the last couple of years, they haven't been so good about the disagreements. <laughs> uh, and um, you know, I, I think it's very fashionable these days in the West for among certain circles to just say, oh, my God, the West is so oppressive, so racist, so sexist. And I'm like, really? Want to come to Iran? Want to come to the <laughs> Middle East? I think I'll show you what real oppression looks like, what real racism, and what real sexism looks like. Just to give you a, a, a sense of an idea, the Baha'is in Iran are actually killed for being Baha'i. Killed. Wow. They are a peaceful uh, religious sect, offshoot yes. of Islam. Peaceful people. They are, you, being a Baha'i is a death sentence, just so you understand. Yeah. So secondly, if you're gay in Iran, they hang you from a crane no. until you die. They hang you no. from a crane until you die. And it's not like in the Western movies where, you know, the, your neck snaps, you are hanging there in agony for minutes. Whoa. Suffocating. Yeah. yeah. And, um, you know, if you're a woman in Iran, well, you have to cover yourself up. If you don't, you're in big trouble. So, and Iran's not the only place that's like this, obviously, and compared to a lot of other countries, it's, it's quite free. But I just want to give an idea to folks. We live in freedom. We are so blessed. We are so lucky. And these idiots that say, oh, my God, they're not all this oppressive. They don't know what the hell they're talking about. And I think everybody needs to appreciate our freedoms. Yeah. Everybody needs to really um Give thanks to the men and, and, and women uh, who fought, bled, and died to give us those freedoms. And, mm -hmm. and, and because of those freedoms, like I get to be an entrepreneur, you get to be an entrepreneur. We get to live the kind of life that we do. And I think it's important that we share this kind of message with people that listen to this so that, you know, it jolts them awake a little bit <laughs> and exactly they understand what they yeah. need to do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And secondly, my, my father, he was the greatest man that I've ever known. He was an mm -hmm. entrepreneur. And this is the kind of man he was. If you needed a job and he had a job for you in his company, he'd give you that job. Yeah. If he didn't, he would go out of his way to help you find a job. Like he would make calls on your behalf, meet with people and get you a job. Like, I mean, just like it was unreal. And if, if you were trying to start a business, he would help set you up in business. If you worked for him and you couldn't afford to buy a new car or buy an apartment or buy a home, he would help you buy that car buy that apartment, buy that home. What a wonderful you might be man listening he to this like. going, yeah. really? Are you serious, Nikki? Boy, who does that? Like houses, cars, apartments. And I go, oh, my father did that, but he wasn't the only one. There was lots of folks in Iran that were that generous. I mean, we, we come from a, an incredibly generous uh, people. Like our, mm -hmm. our, our people are incredibly generous. But my dad did that, number one, because he was a Christian and he felt that he'd been blessed by God and he wanted to share his blessings as he was instructed to by his Lord and Savior. But secondly, he did it because he could. 
He had the financial means to help people. So he helped people. I wanted to be like that when I was a kid. I'm like, that's the best. So I became an entrepreneur. I, I, I'm all about helping people. Like today, we did an event free of charge with no upsell to people to help them finish the year and, and, and sprint to the finish. We called it Dare to Win Sprint to the Finish. And we gave them a half a day of our time. And that's what we do. But when I became an entrepreneur, one of the things I noticed was there's a lot of good people that are entrepreneurs that are frightened to death out of business development and sales. They don't want to come across as pushy. They don't want to come across as salesy. They don't want to reek of commission breath. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> what, <laughs> I know, right? what they want to do is they're, they're kind of hopeful that people will just, you know, they just want to be the coach. They want to be the uh, consultant. They, they don't want to do the sales part. Yeah. Problem is that, you know, that's worth about 30 bucks an hour. Someone will hire you to be a coach. You've got to get good at business development. You have to, but we help them reframe that from selling to serving. Nobody wants to be sold, Deborah, but everybody wants to be served by a caring human being, by an advocate. You know, I can tell you're a very kind person, right? And um, kind people, sometimes they just, they hold back. And when they hold back, they don't, they don't make the money they should. And when we show them how to serve, and we show them how to come across and market in an authentic way, not like, you know, some of these cheesy charlatan marketers that lie their way to, to make money. It's yeah. someone who speaks from the heart. Man, those people, their, their businesses start to soar. It just becomes absolutely incredible. You know, and like you said, I've helped about 11 people become millionaires. I've helped about another 70 odd people, you know, um, add anywhere from 100,000 to, you know, six, seven, eight hundred thousand dollars a year to their to their income. And we did that by really helping them see that their kindness wasn't um, a liability, but an asset. Because yeah. your greatest asset is how much you care about people. And we help good people really see that and live from that and act from that. Because if you can show somebody when you're working with them that you care about them, that you got their back, that you're going to be there for them, you're not going to let them falter. Mm -hmm. Man, that is that is such an awesome thing in business. Your your methods could suck, <laughs> right? <laughs> but your, you know, they could totally yeah. suck. But people are gonna go, oh my god, this person cares so much. They're gonna care their way into making sure I win. You know what I mean? And that is more important than anything, in my opinion. And then you know, our methods thankfully don't suck. We show people how to really nail their message and really. Uh, stand out because if you've got a mayonnaise message in this day and age, it's not going to work. You need a dialed in message. that's really going to help people. How do you get a dialed in message? Well, that's a fantastic question. The first thing is you cannot be talking about yourself. And so many people today talk about themselves. Well, I've got this fantastic methodology and it's got this great acronym to it. And these are the six steps in which we help you. In. Really? Nobody cares. Yeah. Nobody cares about your fantastic methodology with the incredible acronym. You know what they care about? They care about themselves. Yeah, they care about the problem them? they're facing. They, mm -hmm. And if you want to help somebody, if you want to have a good message, the best way is to ask them, what are the key problems they have? Sit down and ask your clients, you know, what are the key problems you have? And ask them enough questions until you understand their most acute problem. Because what is business? Business is a way to solve acute problems for people. This is a people game. It's not a numbers game. It's not about, you know, dollars and cents. I mean, it is at one level, but it's about people. You solve problems for people, mm -hmm. right? And if you come from business is a, a people game, not a numbers game, and you ask people. So let's just say as an example, I'm talking to you and you're making 300,000 a year and you've been stuck there for two years and you want to make a million. Let's just say that's for purposes of this. That's, that was the deal. And I'll ask you, well, what's it like to have been stuck at the same level? And you might say, oh my God, well, you know, I'm frustrated. You know, I'm starting to lose a little bit of faith. Can it happen for me? Can I win? You know, what's that doing to your relationships? Well, you know, me and my sweetheart, we're fighting sometimes and I'm getting short with him and he's getting short with me. And I'm just worried about that. And, you know, I'm, I'm not sleeping. I'm stressing out. You know, uh, I'm breaking out in hives, you know, all that kind of thing. So we go deep into what the pain points are to the point where the entire conversation is about how horrible it is that you're stuck. And then I go, well, where do you want to go? Well, I want to make a million dollars a year and, and I want to work 
10 hours a week less. Okay, well, what would that make possible for you? Well, I'd be able to buy my dream home finally. We'd be able to go on that second honeymoon we've always been wanting to go to. You know, I'd get to, there's this charity I'm really, really passionate about helping. And I, I give them a little bit of money, but I really want to give them the kind of money that would absolutely change the trajectory of what they can do. I want to just give them a big chunk of money. Like, yeah, that's, that's fantastic. The first part's the hell, the second part's the heaven. Yeah. You, you know, and I learned this from one of my mentors, hell and heaven. And then there's the bridge from hell to heaven. And the bridge is what you do. So you want to talk about the hell and you want to talk about the heaven for 95, 96% of the conversation and just, you know, four or 5%, you'll talk about how you do it. Most people mm -hmm. do it. Do, don't do it that way. You yeah. know, they, they go straight they go right into what they do. And, Here's what I do. Let me tell you all about how you want to do it. Why aren't you buying already? Why? Why aren't you buying already? <laughs> Yeah. I'm not sure it's thinking below what I do, how I do it. Yep. No, that, no I completely understand it. I, I, I've certainly seen it um, from my point of view when people have come to to sell to me. You know, it, it's really frustrating when people come in and all they want to do is tell you all about themselves. And it's like, yeah, how about you take some time to get to know me as a human and start to understand what's really going on for me. So tell me a little bit about, you know, what you, you, you when we talked in the beginning, you said, you know, you help inspire people to get out of pain. Um what do you do? How do you do that? I mean, obviously you're talking about the heaven and the hell and you're helping them to, to bridge that gap. What are the things that you actually do to work with them in that bridge? What is it that helps them get from well, hell look, to heaven? You know, I think the most important thing I got to do is I got to show them that I, that I care, that I want them to succeed and I want them to win. Mm -hmm. You know, and I do that by asking really good questions because when they're, understanding the consequences deborah of yeah. staying in hell yeah. they don't want to stay in hell anymore so that's the most important thing is to get them to a point where they decide i'm done with this <laughs> you know there's a lot of folks who don't understand how important that is to the process yeah. right because you want a person to be in a space where their commitment to winning is total yeah. right so they have to make a decision i call these these are the four characteristics of uh, a winner number one is they're decisive right they kill off any alternative to victory so in your case you'd go nikki i'm gonna make a million dollars that's it there is no staying stuck here that, the decision is made there's no walking it back it's like you know the greeks burning the ships <laughs> when they landed in troy you yeah. know what i mean they burned the freaking ships it was We're victory or death right <laughs> yeah. and death wasn't yeah. really a great option so victory will you know look better and that's you know victory is the option the decisiveness is you're gonna go victory and then then you got to be committed to doing what you got to do there's not i'm going to try this for a while and if it doesn't work i'm going to quit there's no i'm committed i'm going to make it happen my commitment is to success and victory and then you, you got to obviously be coachable. You got to be willing to take the coaching yeah. that we deliver to you. And then finally, you've got to be resourceful because you've got to come up with money to invest in yourself. The most important investment you can make is in yourself. You know, Robin Sharma, who when I was a fitness trainer, was one of my clients, the author of the legendary book, The Monk Who Sold His Ferrari. Ferrari, yeah. Sold I love 15 that book. million copies around the world. He's yeah. from Toronto. He lives in the same city as me. And I've become friends with him. And he used to be my client. And he said to me once, Nikki, if you ever want to double your income in any given year, triple your investment in personal and professional development. Let me repeat that. If you ever want to double your income in any given year, triple your investment in personal professional development. Because when you do that, you are strengthening your most important asset. Yeah. If you're afraid of selling, you need to invest in programs that'll shift your mindset and show you how to sell. You know, like what we do for people. Like if you are bad at marketing then you've got to invest in yourself to at least learn enough about marketing so that you can market or or manage someone that you hire to market for you so you got to invest in yourself mm -hmm. and these people go oh, that's too much money i mean i mean let's look at jeff bezos do you know when jeff bezos started amazon he didn't put his own money in there he borrowed money he found a bunch of people that gave him fifty thousand dollars each and by the way that fifty thousand dollar investment Investment they each put in is worth $750 million today. Not a bad investment, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pretty great, right? But yeah. that's what he did. Um, Elon Musk, 
Buddy was like broke when he started PayPal. He borrowed money, but he had the confidence and the conviction that he could win. And if you want to win, you've got to find a way to get resourceful and come up with the money. There's no other way. There's no other way. So this is what we teach people to do. You know, you've got to have these four qualities, these four characteristics. We start with those. You're going to win. Fantastic. And so we're talking very much about sort of coaches, consultants, individuals. The same principles must apply with business owners as well, right? Because we just mentioned, yeah. So give me a, little, a couple of examples of where a business owner might be feeling stuck because they're not necessarily out there doing the sales themselves, but they're having to no, lead the team. Not. And Yeah. So I'll give you, I'll give you an example. About sure. a year and a half ago, January 2021, I had a client who was a restaurant owner. At the time, he had two restaurants, okay? And in Ontario, where we live, restaurants were locked down. And he was an in-dining experience restaurant. His revenue had just... Commented. Yeah. You know, it's like, it, it, had gone, it had gone down like you wouldn't believe. And he's coming in. He's going, what am I going to do? My God, I gotta, how am I going to survive? And, you know, um, he was part of a peer group that I ran. What we told him, that peer group is buddy. No, you're thinking of this all wrong, right? You survived it. Yeah. How many restaurants have gone out of business? And he told us like hundreds, thousands even. I said, well, buddy, you've got to go and you got to change your attitude. You got to go, what, which bankrupt restaurants can I buy really cheap? Mm-hmm. And he shifted his whole mindset. He ended up um, starting three more, four more of his own restaurants, and he bought six restaurants, right? Six other restaurants cheap. Yeah. His income went from like kind of like negative to he had 11 and a half million in additional revenue by the end of the year, and he had four million in additional profit just from shifting his mindset. And he had that because he had a coach show him how to shift his mindset. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, completely. I mean, that's makes, that's makes super powerfully. Yeah, and then there's another story I'll tell you of this young fellow who came to us. He was a personal trainer. Okay, and personal trainers don't make a ton of money, as you know, right? He made really, really poor amounts of money. He made fifteen hundred dollars a month. I went to Toronto. That's not enough for rent and food. It's one or the other. So he he had to borrow money from his mom and dad. He's a grown ass man borrowing money from mom and dad. He was 25 at the time. He came to see me and, and, and you know, he's like, how, how, what do I do? How do I do it? I go, okay, well, who do you work with? Well, I, I, anybody. Okay, that's your first problem. You need to yeah. narrow your, 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 your niche. You need to differentiate. I was like, okay, okay. I work with doctors. Doctors. Why? Well, they have money. Like, you know, not a good reason. No, no, I'm going to work with doctors. Well, doctors didn't really see a reason to work with them, so they didn't. Okay, okay, I'll narrow some more. I'll narrow some more. I'm gonna work with cardiologists. Cardiologists is a narrower niche. Cardiologists, I'm gonna work with well, again, he did it because they have even more money than regular doctors and they didn't buy anything. Yep. But then he met a man who had been a Paralympian athlete. He had a, a, a missing limb, he'd lost a leg in childhood. And he he just he just was called to help this man uh, work out and train, and he loved it. And you know, this man was really grateful because not a lot of people wanted to work with you know someone with a missing limb. And, um, he just said, wow, there's, you know, there, there's so many people with missing limbs. I bet you nobody's working out with them. I'd love to train with them. I, 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 I want to help them. And um, anyways, long story short was in six weeks, he signed up 400 clients, 400 clients. Yeah. He could no longer do one-on-one. He had to do group programs right. for people. And you might go, well, why did he win? Well, nobody was going after these folks. It was a blue ocean. You know, to to quote it, to quote uh, the concepts from the magisterial book, Blue Ocean, Ocean Strategy. Strategy. Yeah. So Blue Ocean, he went into uh, a blue ocean and he got a lot of clients. And his message was, "I'm gonna get you fit. I'm gonna, we're gonna work out. You know, you 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 um, the fact that you're missing a limb doesn't mean that you can't work out, and get strong and fit. Now, I am not." someone who has you know experience with these folks experienced you, you know i've experienced having being able-bodied but i just put myself in their shoes metaphorically speaking 
And they're probably not thrilled to have a missing limb or more than one missing limb. And they, they may have some ideas in their head, like this is terrible. I, I, I'm never going to live a normal life. And I'm not as good as an able-bodied person. I'm not as complete as an able-bodied person. And um, his message was bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> you are just as good as an able-bodied person. And I'm going to treat you like you're an able-bodied person. Uh, uh, and like anybody else, I'm going to treat you like anybody else. And I'm telling you that message must have just stuck. Mm -hmm. And that's why he signed 400 clients in no yeah. time at all. That's the power of having a really dialed in message. One that isn't a Mayo message, but one that's at, aimed at a particular group of people you care about deeply, yeah. but who needs help. And, and their acute problem was huge. And he was able to turn it into a wonderful amount of business and, you know, he went from 1500 a month to 150000 a month pretty quickly. <laughs> yeah, fantastic. It reminds me of you know, Jim Collins and his book, Good to Great, talks about the fact that you, you, you're never going to um, die through lack of opportunity. You're more likely to die through uh, indigestion in terms of the amount of opportunities out there. So the, the clearer you can get about your niche and what it is that you do, um, the better it is for all involved. Yeah. Yeah, I totally agree. Totally agree. So it all comes back to mindset, though, doesn't it? I mean, that's that's really what we're talking about here. And that's what Robin Sharma obviously is, is famous for as well. And it really comes down to how are you viewing things? I think that the, the example you gave of the restaurant is actually really, really good right now because we're obviously, there's talk of global recession. I personally believe you can talk yourself into it or out of it, but um, you know, there's definitely talk of a global recession going on and people will be worried about it. And so they're going to go into it with fear, with what does it mean for me? And actually it should be seen as an opportunity. It's a chance to actually review what you're doing, see, like you said with the restaurants, do I go out and buy more rather than shrink back? Is that how you see it? 1,000%, Yeah. right? These times, these tough times, you know, uh, give you an opportunity to serve more people. So as a restaurant owner, mm. what's the pain of people? Well, go, you know, they're hungry, but yeah. the bigger pain is they haven't been out with people. They haven't gotten to feel like a normal human being. So if you're a restaurant owner, your messaging shouldn't just be, hey, our food's great, come eat our food. It mm -hmm. should be, isn't it about time that you got out again and you yeah. got to enjoy life? And I'll tell you, that's a more powerful message. Yeah. You know what I mean? Way yeah. more powerful message. And that's that's the sort of thing that these folks uh, right now are experiencing. I mean, restaurants right now in Ontario, they they, they can't keep up with the demand. Mm -hmm. They can't yeah. keep up with the demand. <laughs> it's a beautiful actually... thing because of the messaging, yeah. Yeah, I was actually in Sydney a couple of weeks ago, and, and I mean, uh, walking around Sydney, around the Opera House and whatnot, we got to see a show at the Opera House, there was just every single restaurant, bar, cafe was absolutely booming. And I think you're right. I mean, as a human nation, for the last, I mean, particularly in New Zealand, it sounds like Canada is very similar. We've had some serious, serious lockdowns, like that go for months and months where everything is closed. And so, yeah, just getting back together in person with other human beings is, is what we want and need right now. Yeah. 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 Okay. So tips for people going into a recession, if you like, what would you suggest um, people do to help them get through it and make sure they have got the right mindset? Fantastic question. So, you know, um, there are a few things I think that, that are really important for anybody looking at today to think through. One is you need to believe that you can win. You need to believe that you can win. And, you know, one of my mentors did a talk about this subject. And he said there was a study done with a bunch of rats and they put some rats in water and these rats, you know, they wanted to see how long they would last. The rat that lasted the longest before they were, you know, they gave up and were mm. going to drown lasted for 10 minutes. Now, none of the rats drowned. They pulled them out and, you know, fed yeah. them and yeah. let them rest. And then they put them back in water and then, those rats were able to last for two hours plus in the water because they got belief that they could do it. You know yep. what I'm saying? Yeah. So your belief in your victory is super important. And if, if you quit on your dream, if you quit on your belief in you and your dream, that's the only time you can actually lose. Mm -hmm. If you don't quit on your dream, if you don't quit on yourself, you will win. And I'm telling you, this is the number one thing you got to do right now. Believe you can win. 
Then secondly, get clear on what actually is going on. Like, you know, in the United States Special Forces, right, they throw people over the drop zone for a mission. 30, 40 percent of the time, the people are not on the drop zone. They got to get situated, figure out where they are. So look at where your business is actually at. Right. Be clear. Don't put your head in the sand like an ostrich. Look at where you're at. Believe you can win. And then you have got to get help. You've got to get people coaching, mentoring, peer grouping that's going to help you get through. You need coaches who care, mentors who care, mentors who have a track record of delivering results. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Peer groups have a track record. If you do those three things, you will, will succeed no matter what happens out there. No matter inflation, no matter what else. Okay. Yeah, I've heard, I've heard you, you talk you a lot don't. about your mentors, right? So obviously you've got, you're doing, you're walking the talk. You've got your coaches, you've got your yeah, mentors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and if you're in business and you don't get clear about the reality of the situation you find yourself in, right? If you're just kind of like head in the sand and you, and you don't really work on your belief and make sure that your belief in victory is there, and you don't have good mentors helping you out, you're screwed. But if you do have those three things covered, success is 98 and three quarter percent guaranteed. <laughs> <laughs> that was a lot of hard work, right? But it's all good. So tell me, tell me a bit about your books, eight books. I mean, I'm just blown away by that. Um, you eight published books, as you told me, you've written a whole lot more, but there's eight sort of published ones there. What yeah. are the books about? And, and um, yeah, just tell us a little about those. Yeah, so this is my uh, latest book. I, I wrote this uh, with a client of mine. Um, it's called How to Create a Million Dollar a Year Income. He's a insurance uh, person, the number one in his industry in Canada. Uh, yeah. And he has a million dollar a year income. So we teamed up. This is chock full of good tips and advice on how to do that. Um, yeah. I wrote a children's book for my kids when they were very young. Oh teaching them about free enterprise, capitalism, Kathy Capitalist and Johnny Jobmaker, right? Yeah, um, yeah. That was a, a good book. Um, I also wrote, uh, my most famous book was my uh, first business book. It's called Finish Line Thinking, How to Think and Win Like a Champion. Sold, uh, you know, tens of thousands of copies. Um, I wrote, an, uh, and I've got two editions of that. I wrote a book called The Power of Connecting, How to Activate Profitable Relationships by Serving Your Network. Um, and I wrote, um, uh, I wrote a, um, a book called The Thought Leader's Journey. And that's actually the one that I'm offering to your folks as a, a Kindle version wow. of it as a, as a free download. Um, wow. okay. That is basically soup to nuts written for someone who is in a job and wants to get out of that job and become an entrepreneur in the service industry, like a coach, consultant, et cetera. So it just talks about what you got to do. It's so that's a, the thought leader's journey. Is that what you said it was? Thought yeah. leader's journey. And, and then I'm going to put a link to that book. to be in the bottom of the podcast. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And then Perfect. I wrote a political book as well. Oh, okay. Uh, that's interesting. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, well, that's, that's, oh my God, what a, a lot of stuff that we've got there. So that's really good. So I'll put the link to the Thought Leader's Journey, uh, the free ebook in the um, thing down there. Uh, loving the capitalist, what's it, um, Johnny Jobmaker and something capitalist? Kathy fantastic. Capitalist, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> beautiful, I love it. Um, hey, look, we could probably talk for hours because I think you and I have got very, very similar approaches on life. I'm a big fan of Robin Sharma. Um, I'm a big fan of, I do believe that you create your own reality. It's not like you just write something down and it happens, but you have to actually have that belief that you can do it. And then you, you're you putting yourself in the, when you know where you're headed, you can then subconsciously, you're always looking for how you actually get there and knowing that you can do it is really important. So I think we could talk for hours and hours about this, but I suppose I want to just make sure that we get the real gold out of this. So in terms of the three things that the people can take away, you've already mentioned a whole bunch of them, but if we had to just summarize three things that people could do, what would they be? What a fantastic question. So um, I think the first thing you got to do is you got to take care of your health. Um, it's so important uh, to your life success for the vessel with which you go through life to be in tip-top shape. 
So you, you've got to like make it a priority to exercise, to, you know, eat right, to learn about nutrition, to learn about movement and really take care of all that. And you got to do things to like take care of yourself mentally too. So feed your brain with positive inputs like this podcast and meditation and things like that, you know, because there's so much negativity out there in the world. So much. I stopped watching so, the news. They, I stopped watching the news 10 years ago. It was the best thing I ever did. <laughs> yeah, there you yeah. go. Good for you. So there, there's that, number one, right? The, the second thing that I think is super, super important for you to do is show how much you care about people and be around people that are like you in that regard. Like, you know, your associations are so important. You know what I mean? And if you're around people that are negative or don't care, that, that's not going to feel good. So, you know, let those people go. They can go with love, mm -hmm. but they must go. So send them off, right? And um, the last thing I'm going to say is read books. Read books. <laughs> readers are leaders. Leaders are readers. That's the facts. And there's so many people that are so proud today. Oh, I, I don't read. I, don't, I haven't read a book in 15 years. You're proud of that fact? Really? You're <laughs> proud that you haven't read a book in 15 years. Yep. That's insanity. Yeah. A paperback book. I'm not talking about something that's, you know, on, 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 on a phone or you're listening to. I'm talking about re holding paper is soothing. Yeah. You read this book at night versus read it on your phone. This will amp you up and you can't sleep. This will help you calm down and sleep. Yeah. You know, there's something so very true. satisfying about holding paper in your hand and reading it. So well, those so are my I, I, three tips. Love it. I just said there's also something about, I mean, probably people who love books might really hate this, but be able to actually write things in a book as well as you're reading. You know, you can't do that on an electronic device. And it's easy to switch between chapters and go, oh, what was that again in that chapter? Um, I've I have a Kindle for when I'm traveling because it makes it easier than taking all the books. But I have to say, um, I've got a library. I'm pretty much like I'm looking at yours behind you. There's there's books everywhere in, in our life, and it's just it's just fabulous. It's a great way to wind down at the end of the day. I'm proud to say that I read well over a hundred books a year, you know, paper books. Wow. A year. Yep. Um, I've read over 4,000 books in my lifetime. I started keeping track of my reading um, back in 2011. And then I found an app in 2016 called Goodreads, goodreads.com, mm -hmm. which allows you to track the books you read. You know, you put down the name of the book, you can write a review, you can, you know, rate the book. And it, there's a reading challenge. Um, and every year I say, I'm going to read this many books. And last year was my best year since I started tracking. Although I know when I was younger, there were years I read more books than that, but I read 159 books last year. Oh my goodness. <laughs> that's, that's phenomenal. Yeah. Yeah. This year, I don't want to read quite that many, but I'm, I'm keen to do 110, 120. And I'm at about 76 right now at this point in September. And, you, you know, I'm, um, the scorecard's looking good. This, this week, I'll probably finish two or three more just this weekend that I'm kind of reading simultaneously. So I'll be yeah. at 80 by next week at this time, I think. <laughs> um, you're, you're definitely going to get that. I love it. I mean, I must admit, you are reminding me that I, I do love to read, but I have had a few things going on. And I've kind of put that to the side. It's time to get those books back out again and start getting back into the evening. Thank you for the yeah. reminder. Yeah. Of course. May I share one last story? Please, yes. So a little over four years ago, kind of four and a half years ago, there was a woman that came into um, my professional life. I, I work with my better half, uh, yeah. uh, Teresa and I. So this woman was um, the country director for one of the world's oldest and largest personal development organizations. This organization had been around since the late 60s, and they had multiple countries in which they operated. And she led Canada and had for quite some time. Mm -hmm. She brought on a man to help her grow things. And, well, it turned out that they didn't really see things eye to eye, and she ended up leaving, which is unfortunate. Right. So she floundered for about 18 months, not really sure of what direction to take. And then she came to us and 
you know, she signed up and we, um, we started working with her. She loved, she loved, you know, she loved what we did and she very quickly said, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm all in. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, in her first month, she did quite well as a, as a new um, kind of confidant uh, slash executive coach. She did $10,000 in profit. Uh, and in her second month, she did 12,000. In her third month, she did 18,000. In her fourth month, she did $62,200 in profit. It's a wonderful amount of money. And I don't know if you follow the work of Matt Church, who yes. uh, has Thought Leaders Global. I did so Matt Church calls program. That I did speakership. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Matt's so a good friend of mine. He, uh, he, Oh, there you go. So Matt calls that a black belt month, like mm -hmm. $60,000 a month. It's a yep. black belt month. So anyways, we were all so proud of her. She was the, at the time, the fastest person to reach that, the first woman to reach black belt in our world, that kind of a thing. It was great. Yeah. So um, a, a, a few weeks later, um, my son um, who was 12 at the time plays uh, football soccer and he's um, you know he had a tournament in her home city of Ottawa and that's about five hours drive from Toronto where we live and mm -hmm. so as we were driving I called her because I knew she had a son my son's I said hey hey it's it's Nikki I'm coming to Ottawa with my son for a soccer tournament and I was wondering if you and your son would like to meet us and we could maybe have lunch after the tournament on our way out of the city. And she said, that sounds great. So we, we did that. It was wonderful. The kids got along. You know, a few weeks later, we had one of our um, branded uh, thought leader immersion workshops. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, she was there and then there was a bunch of new people. And she, she, she was part of an mm -hmm. annual program we had. We still have. Uh, and um, the time came for the enrollment opportunity into our program. Yep. And during the enrollment opportunity, um, the way I do it is uh, I, uh, I ask our members to come up and share their stories with people. It's very, very powerful when they do it versus I tell people, oh, we're great. Right? <laughs> people say you're great. It's much better. So yep. I asked if anybody wanted to come and share. And she leapt up on stage and said, me, before anyone could put their hands up. And I said, okay, well, you know, she, she just hit black belt. This is great, man. I mean, um, as soon as she got on stage, she started to cry. And like any red-blooded man, when I'm confronted with a crying female, I proceeded to panic. <laughs> what did I do wrong? Why is she crying? <laughs> you know, like, uh, but my exterior was placid and calm. Yeah. And between tears and sobs, she said, Nikki, you didn't know this, but when you and your little son came to visit me and my little son in my city, my little son asked me, mommy, mommy, who are we going to go meet? And I said, oh, we're going to meet Nikki Ballou and his son. And she said, my little son looked at me and said, oh, are we going to get to meet the man who saved our family? Oh. And Deborah, you may have gathered that I am not a snowflake, that I'm not a beta male. I am an alpha man. I am from the Middle East. I do not cry in public. <laughs> yeah, you understand imagine. me? Yep, yep. Um, I cried in public, rivers of tears. We both hugged and between her sobs, she said to me, you didn't know this, but when, when, we, um, when we met uh, in Ottawa, uh, you know, and when, I, when we met and I started working with you, I should say, I, um, I had been in a horrible place. We hadn't paid our mortgage for months. The bank was about to foreclose on our home. And my husband and I were fighting over money and it looked like we might break up and our family was going to break up. And I went, wow. And she said, coming into your program literally saved our family. And when she told me that, I was blown away and humbled. And I just thought, you know, God God didn't put me here in this business to you know, make a certain amount of money. God put me here in this business to do his bidding and help people, help people that are hurting, that are in pain, that maybe don't feel comfortable sharing their pain fully. And, you know, I'll say this to you, that 
everyone listening to this, you have customers that are in pain. You, Deborah, have customers that are in pain and you don't even know it. And if you get up in the morning and you ask God to give you the opportunity to alleviate someone's pain through the work that you do, that's incredible. That is what you're here to do as far as I'm concerned. And here's the pretty incredible part of what happened there. We had eight new people that were there for the enrollment, eight prospects for the enrollment opportunity. Mm -hmm. And yep. our year long program is a you know, high ticket program, right? Sure. O o you know, over three years, we say people need to invest $100,000 through the work that we do to get them from where they are to a half a million to two million a year. Yeah. And if you don't understand that investing 100,000 to make half a million to two million a year is a great investment, then- <laughs> yeah, you, you know, for us. Yeah. <laughs> right. So it's a high ticket program. Yeah. And, um, you know, normally it's, there's a little bit of back and forth and persuasion that might be required with some people. Not some people sign up right away. Mm -hmm. All eight people signed up before- they like were like, hand me the papers. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. They all signed up. And there were two that had told me well before the enrollment opportunity, Nikki, I know you're going to have an upsell. I know. <laughs> I just want you to know. I'm, I'm not, not buying your upsell. <laughs> you got me here. I bought this, but I'm not buying it. Just, just want you to make sure you're not disappointed when I don't buy. Right? You're like, yeah. okay, buddy, no problem. You don't have to buy, you know? Yep. He was the first guy to buy, the first guy. And he looked at me and he said, you son of a bitch. <laughs> he said, I wasn't going to buy. Yep. And then he got a little teary eyed and he just did one of these. And he said, um, but I guess you're not full of crap. <laughs> and I really do need some help. So that was, you know, the beauty of coming from helping somebody caring about somebody is that you're serving and sales and pushiness and all that crap becomes unnecessary yeah. counterproductive quite frankly and that's my final story that is absolutely beautiful and we're absolutely on the same page i mean i think that yeah if you go out there and you do what your god-given talent is your unique ability which is helping people and do it in an authentic way um the rest sort of follows but uh, i can see that you are very passionate about what you do I can see how much love you have for the people that you work with and yeah I'm, I'm so so honored to have spent some time with you and learned all these things from you as well myself because every time I said to you that before the podcast every time I do a podcast with a guest yes the listeners will get some value out of it but I get just as much myself I sit here take copious notes and I know that there's things that I can now take away and use so thank you so so much for your time um just in terms of where people can find you what's the best way to get hold of you how can they find out about your courses your books you so yeah like I'm all over social media and stuff so if you go mm -hmm. on to you know LinkedIn and you put in my name Nikki Blue or you know uh, Instagram or Facebook and yeah. the only one I'm not on is Twitter um but I am on um I am on this uh, alternative to Twitter called Getter. Getter. Uh, okay. Getter and Parler. But yeah Nikki Blue you can find me there it's all good. Yeah. But if you're, you know, if you're a business, you're a coach, you're a consultant, you're an expert, you're a thought leader, and you're like, hey, you know, I'm thinking I should check in my business, go to my main website for you, which is eCircleAcademy.com. Find out a little bit about, you know, who we are, what we do there. Yep. There's a bunch of free resources there, you know, like reports to download and that, all that sort of thing. But there's also this really cool button at the top that goes book a success call. So a success call is all about um, really having a conversation uh, about what success looks like to you, where you are now, where you want to be, what the gap is, mm -hmm. and honestly, why the gap exists and what the consequences of the gap existing are, are to you financially, emotionally, health-wise, relationship-wise. We're going to go deep into all of those. And then we're going to show you what, you know, what you can do should you choose to to get out of these horrible consequences and that's really what i recommend Provided your decisive committed coachable and resourceful and resourceful oh, look <laughs> at you you're so good look
look at you. <laughs> Excellent. I love it. Hey, look, again, um, I could talk all day, but we haven't got the time, sadly, but I really appreciate you giving me your time for sharing your amazing knowledge, for helping the listeners. Thank you so, so much. And we will definitely be talking more. <laughs> look forward to it. Thank you so much. God bless you. Thanks for having me on the show.